testing table again to define the p-value approach. Then you will compare the p-value you obtained from the table to the alpha value. And the caveat is that if the p-value here is less than the significance level, which is the alpha, again, you reject the null hypothesis. But if the p-value is greater than the alpha, we fail to reject. This is just to explain the process in trying to use hypothesis. And we said that we can get sample either from a one sample or two samples or three samples, two samples where you want to compare the means of two population, okay? All these are the step-by-step -step process we will use to solve a given problem. So I'm going to share with you two main problems today, which I'm going to go through systematic step-by-step -step for your consumption. And please, like I said, if you do not understand what I'm doing, don't wait till I finish, then you say the whole show. If you say the whole show, you are not being fair to me. That's all I want to indicate. So please note that. So we can do this example. Then I can move on to the next. Uh, Sandra Zomelo, you, uh, you can talk. Sir, please, I don't understand. You see, what don't you understand? You can't just, I don't, you don't understand what? Please, the beginning. Were you in the class? Yes, sir. What don't you understand? That's it. I'm going to solve a problem so we can all appreciate all the, uh, uh, what I'm trying to indicate. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Yeah, I think that's Thank fair. You. Don't say you don't understand. All right, so, my people. All right, so look at this example. The first one says, in a study entitled, How Undergraduate Students Use Credit Cards, it was reported that undergraduate students have a mean credit card balance of $31,073, according to the Sally Mai, April 2009. This figure was, can you see the question? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, we can. We can, sir. Perfect. This figure was an all-time high and had and had increased 44% over the previous five years. Assume that a current study is being conducted to determine if it can be concluded that the mean credit card balance for undergraduate students has continued to increase compared to April 2001 report. Based on a previous study, use a population standard deviation of $1,000. Take the null hypothesis and alternative. What is the p-value for a sample of 180 undergraduate student with a sample mean credit card of 3325? using a 0 0.05 level of significance. What is your conclusion? Please understand the question. That is the first duty you have. Then you can proceed to solve it. So my first question is that from, the, from scanning this question, are you going to use a Z-test or a T-test? You can answer if you, if you. Because if you know the test statistics you are using, that makes your work simple. So which of the test statistics should we apply in this case? A T test. Um, Z test. The Z test. The Z test. Am I hearing Z or T? Z test. Z, Z, Z. Z test. Yes. 
We said look at the sample size. Z, Z. Okay, that's the first thing. And we are told that they had a sample of what? 180 students. So N is equal to 180. That is first. What is our standard deviation here? You need to scan the question. It's also giving us what? $1,000. Is there a sample mean? Yes. That is what? X bar. Giving us what? 3325. And we've been given information that the reported undergraduate students have a mean credit card of that 3175. It's reported that they have a mean credit card of 31.75. So our population mean is also what? 3173. Based on this significance level of what? 0.05. Now we can go ahead to estimate the, first of all, use the z-test to compute. But oh, can you tell me the null and alternative hypothesis from the problem? If anyone, you can just give it a try. Remember we talk about stating the hypothesis first. Okay, so what it states that you are saying that the question said, assume that the current study is being conducted to determine if it can be concluded that the mean credit card balance for undergraduate students has continued to what? Increase. means that what has continued to increase, means that it keeps what increasing. Therefore, if I want to look at the claim here, the claim is saying that the student's credit card balance keeps what increasing. If it keeps increasing, means that we are looking at greater than, greater than, greater than. It means that it is more than what we have previously. Therefore, in this case, we have been given the alternative hypothesis from the problem. Remember, we said alternative goes to goes with greater than, less than, or equal to. If it has continued to increase, then the population mean is greater than 3173. My alternative null hypothesis says that the population mean should be less than or equal to the same value, 3173. Uh, do you follow the discussion? So I can try and use the board to. So we have sample bar of 3325, population new 3173, sample size 180, sample standard deviation or population standard deviation 1000, alpha is 0 0.05. And we say we are using the Z test, which is given us what X bar minus the population mu divided by the population standard deviation, which is also divided by the sample size. What we have here, I want us to use what we call the p-value approach. Okay. This is what we are going to do in the for the first time, the p-value approach. Are you following up to this stage? Yes. Sandra, is this Sandra Zomelo or so? Are you following up to this point? Yes, please. Perfect. So let's write the HO. We know that the population mu is less than or equal to 3173. Then the alternative. Population mu is what greater than three one seven three. By way of substitution, sample mean is three three two five three one seven three divided by one thousand, which is also divided by the square root of what one eighty. What 
do you have in this case? This should give us what? Two point what? Zero three nine. If you have a calculator, confirm the value. You have effectively you you have what one? I think one fifty two divided by seventy four point three five three five six and that should give you 2.0239 can you confirm the value those who have calculator i don't have calculator yeah, it's, right. it's perfect yeah, it's correct right. it's, it's right. are, are we okay up to this stage yeah so what we have here this guy here is what we call the z test statistics now the question said we should use a p-value approach so I need you to take listen to listen carefully at this point. You say the p-value approach means that we have been given alpha to be 0 0.05. We also need the corresponding probability value of the test statistic, this guy, 2.039. Then we are going to compare that to the alpha, alpha value. So I can go further okay to say that because i need to use the i need to find the p value for 2.039 i use the standard normal distribution word table now i'm drawing this for your consumption if i come here as i said the last time this is where half of the standard normal distribution. This is also another half. Now what we have computed is 2.039. This side, I'm going to shade this to say that based on my normal distribution, this is going to be my rejection what region. I'm going to reject anything that falls within this. I'm going to reject it. Let me delete this first. Forget about this. So there are several types of types of standard normal distribution table we are going to use, okay? But because of this class, we can choose one, familiarize ourselves with it and use it throughout our discussion. So please remember the, the test statistic value is 2.039. So when I come here, if you have your table, you can look for your table and we can go through. Watch here. This table is then shows the negative values on here as we have. It shows the negative value. But please note, this whatever you have here, we let me go back to the board. Um, okay. You see, if I also have something here. We say the information you have here and they, they are symmetrical. So whether the table you have is negative or positive, whichever value you obtain here will be the same value you obtain there. So they are symmetrical. They are the, the same. Okay. So if I come here to say that, let me use my table. If you have your table, you can pick it. Although the values you see under the Z here, this guy, is, they are all negative. I can use the same standard normal distribution table, okay, to find my P value. Inside the table here, everything here, as I move the cursor, they are the P values you have here, the probability values. If you can see how I'm trying to move around with the, my pen. So I can just say that, let me ignore the negative values here and look for 2.0, uh, what was the value? Approximately 2.039. Okay, approximately 2.04 to two decimal okay, places. Yeah, yeah. Okay, because sometimes you may not see the exact value you are looking for. So you approximate it to two decimal places. Now watch here, though the values are negative, just ignore the negative. You will see that you have 
2.1, no, starting from minus 3.0, all the way to what? What value is all the way to what? Zero. Point zero. So I've calculated 2.04. This is 2.0. I've highlighted on that. Because we are saying that the p-value approach says that look for the probability of the corresponding z-test statistic value you have.